welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia is defined as serum calcium level less than 8.7 or equal to 8.7. The normal value is around 8.8 .8 to 10.7 milligram per deciliter. Calcium is very important for bone formation and neuromuscular junction. So acute hypocalcemia produces neuromuscular irritability and chronic hypocalcemia produces bone loss. Approximately 99% of the body calcium is inside the bone. Other remaining 1% is in the extracellular compartment. In that nearly 50% of the serum calcium is ionized or free. Whereas the other 40% is bound with albumin and it can be bound also with phosphates. So hypoalbuminemia can produce falsely low calcium levels. So we have to correct the calcium levels in hypoalbuminemia. So the correction formula is serum calcium plus 4 minus serum albumin into 0 0.8. For example, a patient's calcium level is 8.9. So albumin is 1.8. So 8.9 plus 4 minus 1.8 into 0 0.8. That gives a value of 10.66. That is normal. That is the importance of albumin level uh, and correction factor for calcium. So is mostly caused by disorders of parathyroid hormone and vitamin D and also can be seen in renal failure. The important cause of hypocalcemia are one is chronic renal failure, another one is hypoparathyroidism. Other causes are hypoalbuminemia, we, we are, hypoalbuminemia, we have seen that it will be falsely low. So it, you can call it a pseudo hypocalcemia, but uh, some patients will have clinical findings of hypocalcemia uh, here also but uh, major clinical findings may not seen in this type of patients alkalosis a decrease in hydrogen and leaves negatively charged binding sites of albumin available to bind ionized calcium chronic renal failure is one of the common causes for hypocalcemia vitamin d deficiency nowadays nowadays it is very very common so low intake low sun exposure chronic renal failure chronic liver failure malabsorption syndromes all can produce vitamin d deficiency in that uh, sunlight exposure lack of sunlight exposure is very very common nowadays hypoparathyroidism can be due to hereditary or acquired acquired can be due to post surgical or autoimmune diseases Pseudo hypoparathyroidism is in PTH resistance. The same finding can be there in hypomagnesemia. Here also resistance to effects of PTH can occur. Acute pancreatitis can precipitate calcium uh, sobs in the abdomen that can produce hypocalcemia. Respiratory alkalosis can produce uh, hypocalcemia, especially in hyperventilation induced respiratory alkalosis. An elevation in pH increases the calcium binding to albumin, thereby lowering the plasma ionized calcium. So it's a transient phenomenon, but patient can have some symptoms. The fall in ionized calcium with acute respiratory alkalosis is around 0.16 mg per deciliter for each 0.1 unit increase in pH. So hyperventilation with respiratory alkalosis is one of the most common cause for hypocalcemic tetany in emergency room. So the treatment is not calcium, it is something else that we will see. Hypocalcemia with hypoparathyroid hormone that is very very common in post-surgical cases. So PTH can be reduced due to an uh, hereditary cause or autoimmune diseases or post-surgical. In that post-surgical is very, very common. Surgical hypoparathyroidism can occur after thyroid surgery. Uh, during thyroid surgery, the surgeons may remove even parathyroid hormones in case of uh, doubt of any other abnormality. So that patient can present with hypoparathyroidism and hypocalcemia. Any radical neck surgery also, this will be removed. 
now we will see the clinical feature the most important clinical finding most common clinical finding is tingling and numbness around the mouth hands feet that is the commonest thing some patients develop strider because of laryngeal spasm rarely patients can have convulsions also so the both hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia can have convulsion tingling sensation all these things can be there in both one but carpopedal spasm is classical for hypo calcemia and hypocalcemia induced tetany it is not tetanus it is only tetany it's a muscle spasm upper limb spasm produce carpal spasm lower limb spasm produce pedal spasm so that is called as carpopedal spasm the uh, upper limb joints of fingers and thumb are extended and there is opposition of thumb so that is the classical finding you can see here carpal and pedal spasm other signs are drowsy sign inflating the bp cuff on the upper arm more than systolic blood pressure will reproduce carpal spasm you can see the picture here chaustic sign tapping over the branches of facial nerve produces twitching of the facial muscles so hypocalcemia is a is mainly a clinical examination finding so clinical test should be done in a suspected cases it may be uh, uh, then uh, confirmed with lab investigation you can remember the clinical findings like this cat sat that's a pneumonia convulsions altered behavior tingling and numbness around the mouth hand feet some patients can have strider some patients can have arrhythmias then tetany carpopedal spasm so remember cat sat that's a pneumonia now ecg we have told there will be some changes the main change is prolonged qt interval you can see here first ecg is normal qt interval then the second one is prolonged qt interval some patients can develop ventricular arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation rarely patients can have bradycardia also but the most important clinical finding we should not miss is prolonged qt if we are seeing prolonged qt uh, in ecg patient requires admission and correction of calcium as fast as possible now investigations like serum calcium can be low serum albumin uh, if it is low then calculate the corrected calcium levels serum creatinine should be done it it will be elevated in renal failure serum phosphorus also will be done in all patients we'll see what is the correlation of serum phosphorus with uh, hypocalcemia vitamin d level should be done in all patients the decreased production and action of vitamin d can cause hypocalcemia with a high pth serum pth pth should be done in all patients with hypocalcemia magnesium should be done because it can produce redu reduced action of pth abg should be done to rule out alkalosis especially respiratory alkalosis serum amylase and lipase should be done to rule out acute pancreatitis hypercalcemia is a common finding in acute pancreatitis it is mainly due to the precipitation of calcium soaps in the abdominal cavity now you can see the differential diagnosis of hypercalcemia here with the help of this chart hypoalbuminemia if it is present we have to calculate the corrected calcium here mostly patient will be asymptomatic rarely we can see some clinical finding which may uh, 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 may not have any clinical importance there alkalosis very important very common in emergency room it is mainly due to hyperventilation syndrome it is mostly psychological uh, hyperventilation syndromes serum calcium will be low serum phosphate will be normal serum pth will be normal hypoparathyroidism mainly occurs after post thyroid surgery or autoimmune hypoparathyroidism also can occur calcium is low phosphate is high pth is low vitamin d deficiency all serum calcium phosphate pth all low chronic renal failure serum calcium low serum phosphate is high serum pth is high pancreatitis calcium low serum phosphate normal or low pth is high 
हाइपर मैग्नीसीमिया अगेन सिरम कैल्शियम इज लो फॉसेट में लो और नॉर्मल सिरम पी टी एच विल बी नॉर्मल और लो सो दीस आर द इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस फॉर हाइपो कैल्सीमिया सो बेसिकली वी हेव टू डू ऑल दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू रोल आउट दिस कंडीशन इन दैट फर्स्ट वील टेक एन ए बी जी फर्स्ट वील सी द एलबुमिन एंड रोल आउट हाइपो एलबुमिनिमिया देन टेक एन ए बी जी रोल आउट एल्कोलोसिस देन पी टी एच शुड बी डन वाइटमिन डी शुड बी डन लेवल्स ऑफ वाइटमिन डी शुड बी डन क्रियाटिन शुड बी डन एम एल एस लाइफ एस शुड बी डन मैग्नीशियम लेवल्स शुड बी done so these are the investigation that will give you the report now if the patient is having respiratory alkalosis and tetany so the treatment is rebreathing mask not calcium infusion you have to give a paper mask for rebreathing it is only useful in hyperventilation induced tetany not in other types of hypocalcemia so it will correct the respiratory alkalosis when we rebreathe the same air will uh, collect in the bag so that carbon dioxide wash out can be avoided patient will not develop respiratory alkalosis now if there is a real hypocalcemia like if there is no hypoalbuminemia calcium should be corrected so here if there is a significant qt prolongation or symptoms of calcium hypocalcemia is present or arrhythmia is present then we have to give iv calcium gluconate so iv calcium gluconate 10 to 20 ml 10% solution iv is available that contains around 186 mg of elemental calcium it can be given slowly but uh, in some cases at arrhythmia and all we have to give very fast so until that uh, tetany stops we have to give the calcium infusion then 50 ml of 10% calcium gluconate may be added to 1 liter 5% dextrose or ns should be given as an infusion so the rate should be adjusted so that the serum calcium is maintained between 8 mg per deciliter to 9 mg per deciliter so that is very very important so every 4 hours we have to check the calcium levels again if hypomagnesemia is there we have to correct the hypomagnesemia with magnesium sulfate injection iv 1 to 2 gram every 6 hour can be given or oral magnesium tablets can be started now patient who is having hypocalcemia especially after uh, parathyroid removal patient may require very high dose of calcium so some may require 500 mg tad some may require 1000 mg three times daily vitamin d should be corrected 60000 international unit per week can be continued if there is low vitamin d so after 3 uh, uh, months we can review the vitamin d levels we should not over treat uh, vitamin d because uh, it can produce toxicity so for 3 months we can give 60000 international unit per week then we recheck the uh, vitamin d levels so patients with hypoparathyroidism require lifelong calcium and vitamin d supplementations but other patients who is having transient vitamin d deficiency we have to correct only that so we have discussed about hypocalcemia whenever we see hypocalcemia first check the albumin level if albumin is low go for correction factor then if the correction factor done and calcium is normal no need to do any further management then do pth levels hypoparathyroidism is one of the important cause then rule out alkalosis by taking an AB, abg respiratory alkalosis then creatinine should be done to rule out renal failure magnesium should be done to rule out hypomagnesemia phosphorus should be done whether hyperphosphatemia or hypophosphatemia is associated with uh, hypocalcemia pancreatitis should be ruled out in alkalosis the treatment is rebreathing mask and reassurance to the patient rest all conditions calcium gluconate iv as a bolus or repeated doses or infusion is the treatment
thank you